blasts, uh, air strikes, uh, explosions. It's something now we're more or less get used to, but I guess it's it's hard to get used to it fully. And first time it was just really, really scary. So I'm here in Kiev since the beginning of the war. At first, I didn't believe that the war was about to begin because for me, it has always been like some kind of a legend that some people can start attacking another country. So even though I was aware that wars are real, that people are dying and so on, but I've never thought that it could happen to us and especially talking about a war with Russia. I've always believed that there is some kind of kind kinship, like kind of brotherhood between us. And when it started, I didn't think that it was real. Maybe uh, compared to lots of Ukrainians, I was not so shocked when I heard the news on February 24th. For lots of students and staff members of Vasilstus Donetsk National University, the war started in 2014 when the representatives of the so-called Donetsk People Republic came to our university, removed the Ukrainian flag from the main building and replaced it with their tricolor. From that moment, each of us had to make the choice to stay there or to leave. Yes, I remember the day, the 24th of February. I woke up approximately at 4.35 a.m. Uh, because I heard some loud noises like flat tire or something, but it, I didn't pay, pay attention about that because we live in the neighborhood where a lot of cars and etc. So I just fell asleep. And after a few minutes, I heard that again, and it was even louder. Then I saw the light in the rooms of my brother and my parents. I jumped up out of, of the bed and went into the corridor. There I saw my brother and I asked him like what happened. And he just calmly said, nothing, everything is fine, what happened? And then, at, right in this moment, I heard the voice of my mother from her room and she shouted, Karina, the full-scale war, war is, has, has started, the Russia bombing us. I'm in Kiev, Ukraine right now, where I live with my wife and son. Uh, when the full-scale invasion began, my wife was pregnant, so we pretty quickly left Kiev and went to western Ukraine and eventually to Poland, where my son was born. But we came back last summer and have been here most of the time since. February 24th of last year obviously was an unforgettable day in many ways, the day the full-scale invasion began. For me and my family, it was a time of confusion. No one really understood the full scale of what was happening everywhere, the risk that we were in. Uh, but I can remember the unforgettable sensation of waking up in my apartment and hearing explosions for the first time, knowing that missiles were raining down in the city where I live. Uh, I found myself spending a lot of time on social media or just following any news. It made me very paranoid to know that my hometown, where all of my friends are, my family, where I grew up, could be bombed or destroyed um, at any day. And I found myself not only looking out for 
my regions and my hometowns and cities, but also checking up on friends and family or just anybody that I knew. I would check every single region. I would try to reach out, whether it was through Skype or WhatsApp. And with every day, I became more and more stressed um, not receiving the responses that I wanted from the people that I knew. Back here um, in America, I was not physically affected because I was overseas <laughs> from where the actual war was. So physically, I was safe from any implications, but mentally and emotionally, it still took a toll on me. People here would ask me a lot about any questions about the war, I felt myself responsible for answering as if I was the one liable for educating everyone and letting them know exactly what's going on. I was only 18 when the war has really picked up in the recent years and a lot of people from my high school would approach me, teachers, students, some would say their condolences to me on the daily. Others would ask me about whether the people back home were safe or not. And I even received a fair share of some sarcastic comments or just some controversial topics said to me. It was as if, it was as if I represented Ukraine and had to be the all-knowing person and the politically correct, the non-controversial person, even though I was just an 18-year-old girl. I remember quite well the 24th of February, even though I haven't been in Kiev and didn't wake up because of explosions. But I woke up and those days were pretty stressful because I was watching Ukrainian news and I couldn't understand how all those people can be so sure that everything is going to be fine and that there will be no war. I've seen people in Kharkiv, people in Mariupol, people in Kiev saying that oh, no, there will be no war, nothing is going to happen. But remember that I took my phone and started reading the news the same way as I've been doing for several weeks, maybe months before that. And the first thing that I saw was a message from my nephew who lives in Vasilkiv, a town 40 kilometers from Kiev that has been severely bombed and Russians were trying many, many times to take over because there is a military uh, university, I think, or university college. There is basically like a military base, military airport. So yeah, I've got a picture from him where something has been burning. And at first I didn't understand what it was. So I remember that I texted back to him, what is this? Is this some sort of a fire? Why? And then he wrote back to me that the Russians have started bombing us and the war, the full-scale war has started. February 2024 started for me around 4ish a.m., something like this. I was in Mariupol. This is the city in the southwest part of Ukraine on the Azov Sea and this was basically, I think, the biggest wound of this war for all of us before we knew about Bucha, Irpin and all of that. And it was kind of a shock. I think at the beginning I was like really like the first couple of hours, I was just trying to think up of something to do, something to fix somehow to help in this situation. And of course, the question that everyone was faced with that day is what should I do? What's going to happen and how do I respond? 
how can I do what I need to do and take care of my loved ones at the same time? Um, which for me meant photographing, trying to tell the world what was happening in Ukraine, what that looked like, what that felt like. Uh, Honestly, a really hard question because it's special for anyone. Everyone has their own methods. I don't know. Because I've grown really numb since the beginning of war. Um, I don't feel fear at all. If, if the day comes when I have to go to fight, I'll go without any doubt, without any fear. I'm not afraid of explosions, I'm not afraid of fire, anything like that. I'm not afraid of death, yeah. It's hard to believe to say that because I've always loved life and so on. What gives me strength is hope that it will be over soon. I'm kind of, I feel guilty that I left and those people stayed. I feel guilty that I'm right now in the United States and my people are there but still i think that being here persuading my degree doing my uh, master's research which is gonna be on air pollution due to the um missile attacks and like in general war related air pollution this is something which is gonna help ukraine to rebuild itself uh, after the war will end and after Ukraine will win this war. And the one thing which kind of like keeps me going on is that memory from Mariupol of that like long street and missiles flying above my head. And I was just like, I'm gonna go on because there is no other way to go through it except of going forward first of all i don't necessarily consider myself all that strong i think i'm surrounded by an entire country of people who have many fewer options than i have of course i if i really wanted to i could leave but i don't want to um, being surrounded by so many people who are being strong i think makes it easier for me to also feel like i can get through this Knowing that Ukraine is uh, the moral superior in this situation, in the right, that also, of course, helps me to feel like I'm in the right place. And of course, despite everything that's going on, Ukraine still feels like home to me. Where I find the strength to go on is through the people that I know back home that have to be strong in order to not only survive, but just to keep their life moving. Physically, I am safer here than I would be there. And I feel as though I need to be strong for the people that have put in so much effort just to survive. And by being strong, I'm able to not only educate, but find a way to help and help with the relief of those that are fighting back home. Definitely love to my home, to my country, and um, the armed forces of Ukraine, of course, and my brother, that is, he's on the one of the front lines right now, and I know that I have to do everything here that I can, because we have to do everything to help them well i often think to myself that i'm doing way too little and i'm abroad and i feel guilty for that but i think to myself that if i stop even if i would come back to ukraine i'm not sure i would get a job and be able to continue with donations that i am able to do now so I'm just telling to myself that I should at least continue doing the little I can. The faith that one day this evil empire of Russia will be destroyed and will disappear. I just hope all these criminals get what they deserve.
from the president of the terrorist country to the executors, the liars, the thieves, and the murderers. This hope and hope in our victory are those things that uh, give me the strength and faith not to stop. I think basically it's a hope in people because I have, during my volunteering experience, I have seen so many good people that were ready, that, were, that have lost everything and they were ready to help others, to assist them. Because you are curing yourself through being kind and good person to others. And also hope as such and faith as such in people, in your country, in the fact that your culture has existed, your language has existed, and your ancestors are proud of what you are doing, gives you hope in a bright future, even when you're going through the most difficult times in a human history. Hope gives me strength. Hope for coming back home one day. We are trying to stay strong because each of us is the warrior and we will win. Ukraine should win and the faith in that also helps me a lot.